Hi and welcome to the next class of the Conservative Yeshiva Online Learning. Today we're going to be talking about Delilah, or Delilah, the woman that managed to actually undo Samson's power. All of the Philistines did not do it, but one woman did. What was her power? Well, that I'm leaving to you to some extent, but I think we can figure out the beginning of it. As the story opens with Vayehavea, he loved her. Or so it would seem, for all of us who are familiar with the word Ahav or Ahava in Hebrew, love. Uh, but the question comes what that word means. And if you start searching, you discover that it is used in two realms. You can have Ahava between two human beings, especially because of between a man and a woman, and you can have Ahava between a human being and God. The Ahava between a human being and God we're familiar with from the Shema, the Ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. Okay, that is one form of love. But then we have the Ahava, the love, or perhaps another word is more appropriate, that Yaakov feels for Rachel, and that Amnon feels for Tamar. Remember, we've been dealing also along the side with the story of Amnon and the rape of his half-sister Tamar. That story comes back to haunt us here because the feeling, the emotions that bring about that rape is Ahava. And so we're left to wonder how are we supposed to interpret it? And indeed, you might find some translations that rather than write, he loved her, which is a deep, complex emotion, it will say he was infatuated with her. That is a little bit different. The emotional part is quite different in love and in infatuation. Going back to Yaakov, to Jacob and Rachel for a moment, it is quite interesting that just like in our story, we are informed that the man loves or is infatuated with the woman, but we have no indication whatsoever about her feelings. So on the side, I'm leaving you to wonder, how did Rachel feel about Jacob? He was willing to work for her for at least seven years, but at no point are we told what she felt. And to throw another thought at you, she had to cooperate with switching her place with that of her sisters at the wedding night. Um, so I'll leave you with those thoughts and the implications of it for our story with Samson and Delilah. The next topic I would like to mention briefly is the issue of the three and four. If you went through the pages, you will have realized that we spoke about the structure of the story. The story is a very structured story. It has a structure of one, two, three, where the fourth one changes completely, okay? In Hebrew, this is termed shlosha ve'arba'a, a term taken out of Amos's prophecy in, par in chapter one, Perek Aleph, um, and it has been borrowed from there by Yair Zakovich, teaches at Hebrew U, who has written about it extensively. He noticed that this is quite frequently in Tanakh, that we have a pattern of three, one, two, three, and a, an event takes place three times, but on the fourth time, it changes. This might very well be a human rhythm. Think of how many times you have said, one, two, three, go. You don't want anybody to do anything while you say one, two, three, but on the word go, everybody runs. The same way in our story, one, two, three, fail, but number four, the whole story changes. And the final thing that I would like you to think about, and I would like to hear your opinions on it, is the significance of Samson's hair. And if you want to expand it, hair in general in Tanakh. I look forward to, to hearing more of your comments.